move forward uh, playwright takes this opportunity to honor mr ashok kumar and mr prabjot singh for their contribution to indian sports i request mr vivek atre and mr hardeep chandpuri to honor them and mr prabjot singh also a round of applause for him please in sports are a common phenomena which often become hurdles for the best of sports persons to dis discuss this in more detail we have with us dr mandeep dhillan professor and head department of orthopedic surgery pgi mr chandigarh he specifically told me not to say anything else so without further ado over to him thank you beta guys girls gentlemen and ladies It's a bit unusual for me to speak with somebody else controlling my PowerPoint, so you'll have to excuse me. <laughs> I am. I don't know whether the guy will change the slides when I raise my finger or if I raise my thumb. So, if there's a muck up over there, it's all my fault. Two things when you are the last speaker. Usually, there are two things when you are the last speaker. Either you're not well liked by the organizers. or they put you there so that they are sort of biding the time till the chief guest comes so since the chief guest has gone i think i am the latter part but let me see if i can entertain you to the best of my abilities i was supposed to talk about injuries in cricket and no i'm not going to be scientific about it don't worry i'm not going to be showing you operations or anything whatever it is but i'm going to be talking about my experience and please note i picked up cricket all day long we've been hearing that cricket has got the most money and i'll be showing you that despite the most money understanding about the injuries in cricket is often as bad as it's in the other sports next now i have uh, worked chale aap aise karte ho to agla agla slide okay rajpal in the morning said that uh, he had toured with me when i was the team doctor for the indian hockey team and that's us uh, when we traveled to uh, pakistan we had a tour of india and pakistan and again if vivek will excuse me being the last speaker means i can drag my talk on <laughs> so i have a very interesting anecdote about this team tour rajpal had become the captain for the first time sardara singh who became the captain was a reserve because his older brother you can see him standing there was in the team and he was always wanting to get into it and the guy sitting here is sandeep next team next slide these two guys who became powerhouses on their own guy but they were youngsters kids and i as an orthopedic surgeon at that time there was no great concept about sports medicine a guy who could treat an injury was a sports doctor but now i tell them my son is a sports physician very different i tell them that if a player comes to me for treatment sports medicine has failed that is what people do not understand sports medicine and i work a lot on sports medicine also means a player should not come under the surgeon's knife and the anecdote i was going to tell you about this was we had three matches in india and three matches in pakistan and i became great friend with the pakistani team the one match here we won and then pakistan beat india badly in the jalandhar and amritsar matches and so we were all traveling in our own individual bus buses and uh, at that time the dvd or cd of uh, 
Aishwarya Roy singing that song, famous song with Amitabh Bachchan and his son, her husband. What's the name of the song, guys? Kajarare. We would play it in our car, in our bus, and everybody would dance and do this thing, and the Pakistani players were jealous. <laughs> so we won one match in Lahore, and then we were supposed to go to Rawal Pindi. The, the team doctor was my friend. He approached me, the boss, can we not have that? CD in our bus for one part of the system. So I went and talked. I said, what do you want to do? I said, I'm going to go to the house. So I said, this is wrong. I said, then I told him, I'm compromised. The next two matches, the CD is ready. But these guys did not give that CD. But let's go on from there. Next, please. Okay. Why talk about cricket injuries? <laughs> there is animation over here. So, you know, why talk about cricket injuries? Because there is a limited knowledge about what is known as an injury in sport. The injury issues which are pertinent to a cricketer and may not be pertinent to maybe a javelin thrower or a shooter. So, we pose these questions and contact injury every, everybody knows about. The non-contact injury and the overuse injury was very specific. So let's see. You know, there are standard overuse injuries for all sports. For example, if there is a golfer's elbow, golfer no hona. Any thrower can get it. If you get a stress fracture, it doesn't happen anywhere. Any player can get it. But in cricket, you must understand, in one team, there are four different types of players. A batsman, a bowler, a fielder, and a wicket keeper. And every time they get an injury, it is probably different. Their work requirement is probably different. Now, for example, if you look at cricketers, batsmen, they need to stay focused. So they need concentration. They are bent down. They need to make sure we, they don't get exhausted. Next. And they need to be strong in their upper body. Jaya Surya sixes come up because his torso is one and a half times somebody else's. That's why he swings and hits a sixer. So his, his uh, what do you call that, rehabilitation, or what we now know as prehabilitation, make them strong there, is very different from what Murli Dharan would need or Harpajan Singh would need. So that's the point we have. Fielders, they get mostly contact injuries because they throw themselves. They run, they feel, they injure their foot, they twist their ankle. So many things happen. And they require explosive. The worst case scenario is bowlers. Bowlers get injuries and the potential for injury is there every time he runs up. And we'll show you all that that happens because they fast bowlers actually get a lot and lot of injuries in the back, in their hamstrings, and in the other areas. Wicket keeper, he is bent down all the time. And let me tell you very honestly, there is no published data about wicket keepers and injuries. PGI is the only institute which has published data taken from PCA and some other institutes about what happens to wicket keepers. When they retire, what happens to their backs? What happens to their knees when they are always bent all the time? Nothing available despite cricket being rich. So what can we infer when we look at all of this? We can surely think that if there's one physiotherapist for a cricket team, he cannot apply the same protocols for all 20 players. That is why they need two or three and a conditioning person. I'm not talking about psychology as yet. They need different issues for bowlers, for batsmen, for wicket keepers, and the fielder so this is very, very important. And people had not realized that. And what would happen is, I remember when they used to be staying in the Taj, originally when this Sri Lanka team used to come or somebody, I used to go visit them. They have a suite which is given to the physiotherapist. The concept of a team doctor for Indian cricket has still not come in. They only have a physiotherapist. So they used to have a suite. And kya hota hai? Which, um, physios used to talk to me. Sir, we have to do this, that, I used to go there. Who's going to do it? Sir, first of all, the captain is going to do it. What's that? Sir, he's going to treat here. I said, you know, the bowler, the night, the night, the night, again, the test match, he has to bowl again. Do him first. No, sir, seniority first. That was working at that time. Next, please. 
fourth question, after all I have said, what's the big deal? And most of these pictures, guys, are from the golf club, where favorite watering hole of the cricketers. So, so, uh, so, what's the big deal? The big deal is we need specialized therapies for the individual. And until everybody realizes it, it's not going to work, it's not going to succeed. Next, please. So this comes about with three things. These are my favorite kind of bone I pick. Is if you surveil, we started it in hockey also for some time. If you have injury surveillance, that means and you document it, you will know who is prone to injury. So that's why most international people have something as a pre-participation survey. We did it for a, in a big way for the IPL teams. Every guy, foot, um, UK football, they spend almost 30,000 pounds when they buy a player to see what is his injury surveillance, what is his injury documentation before they pay the other five million. So this is important. And this was not realized here for a very long time. Next. Special problems about this. One of the things which we did not know in cricket at that time, what is an injury? That means poor injury definitions. I'm losing you here, guys, but it's because after 2000, we did not have a playing season. Before 2000, winter was the playing season. Baki rest siga, people would recover. Now we do not have a playing season. So you could not define, football defines it. They play in the winter, summers is off. So in the season, how many injuries, whatever, whatever, they have injury documentation and injury uh, definitions very clearly. Next, please. Only three major countries by 2011 had data. Australia had data, which was done by four or five doctors, but they talked about bowling injuries, batting injuries, fielding injuries. England had data, but they didn't talk about bowling injuries, batting injuries. They said injury incidents. Out of 1,000 days, 57 player days lost. And South Africa had data, which they said, we have 65% acute injuries and 20% chronic injuries. Which is taazi sat lagi hai ke purani sat lagi hai. Now, how do you compare the teams there? Because there is no injury surveillance data. So this was a major, major problem. You could not say that certain countries' method is better than the other countries. So, we found the World Council of Science and Medicine in cricket. We've actually found it, uh, founded it in Hotel Mount in 2011, but that is not known for. Formalized in the World Cup semi-final in Sydney, when it was where Steve Smith ne amari India ki khub patai ki thi. So we were all there at that time, and we have started strategies for injury surveillance. And I'll tell you what these strategies mean. That would, would probably help the hockey players also. So based on this data and common definitions, we published this. Now that this is how you should define an injury for an elite player. And first thing we did, that a fast bowler cannot bowl more than a certain amount of ball. Disqualified. Otherwise, he will get injuries. So the, except for test matches, a fast bowler in practice cannot do more than eight or nine. I don't know if they call you also must be knowing. A fast bowler cannot do it. Otherwise, their backs don't take the stress. And spinners can do more, but after that, they have to rest. So this was something we came up. And we started this study in the year of the World Cup. And we did the first surveillance injury in, in PCH, Chandigarh. And we found that, that players tend to hide their injuries. All of them are telling you, it becomes worse when they play with it. And at a high level problem, it is, and this is the Sri Lankan cricketers when they were young, Mahroof and Dilshan, when they were starting out. They hit their injuries for two weeks and then stayed out for nine months. So this is, youngster ko to pata nahi na, somebody, the team doctor or the physio has to know that. 
and they kept on playing despite injuries and they were also not sure whom to approach. If one of these kids gets injured, she doesn't know who to talk to. Talk to my coach or talk to my, should I go to a doctor or should I go directly to a doctor? Then this was not available over there at that time. And so we started looking at various data and we did an epidemiology study and even the Australians and South Africans had problems. They got inadequate treatment. I was in Sri Lanka when Bretley came after surgery. He bowled seven balls in a test match and came straight to my hospital. Inadequate rehab. Next, please. The Sri Lankan cricket team, one of the fast bowlers, nobody could understand what was wrong with his elbow. In cricket, he had a baseball injury. That means he was jerking his elbow. And he got what is known as an injury similar to baseball. I mean, I am proud we were able to publish this, so my CV became better. But this is something which should have been picked up at an earlier stage. So cricketers can present with common or unusual injuries. And you have to be aware of what is happening. And now PGI is a referral center because every time a cricket team tours, first time they call me up, sir, Nagpur ka MRI center define kar do. Delhi mein kisko milna hai. So we have now become, because we are documenting all the players, these are all these guys who come to us for MRI when they come, did not allow it. You could substitute only a fielder. Aapka wicket keeper ko chot lage, dusra wicket keeper ban jayega. Bowler ko chot lage, shot by one bowler. We published our research and this substitute paper was published in many international journals. And now the ICC has changed the rule. Like for example, in the Delhi test, David Warner got injured and he was replaced by Matt Renshaw. So I'm proud of the fact that our research has at least stimulated rule changes in the ICC. By Jugaad pata ki hai? Aapta Hindustani Jugaad nubi chanke hai. So another thing where I influence the ICC rule is by another Jugaad. And this is my last few slides. We helped Murli Taran in his chucking problem. You know what chucking is and what, who, anybody old enough to remember Murli Dharan? Yeah, yeah. And he was accused of chucking. You know, he had this problem. So here's the story. There's a rule 24.3 of ICC which says that you cannot, next, you cannot move, jerk the arm more than 7 degrees for a spinner and 15 degrees for a fast bowler. When you say, that's the rule. And it was a rule by the MCC for a long time. And this is what I mean, that when, from when you're delivering the ball, this movement cannot happen. This is called chucking because it allows you to throw it faster. Okay. So this was what the problem which was there. People started raising doubts about Murli Dharan. He went in 2001 to Australia. He got all these things with markers and the best high funda things at that time. And they said, no, he's not chucking. But nobody believed it. Vedi Saab wrote a big column, Murli is a monster. The Prime Minister of Australia said, we don't want him in our country. And the captain was supportive of him. And when he was called, no ball, the whole team walked out. This is R Rana Tunga, did it at that time. So ICC was silent. Nobody would speak about anything. And what happened was, Murli said, I'm going to resign. He had taken 407 wickets at that time. So he said, I'm going to resign. I am going home, but the Sri Lanka government got involved. So the, I was working in Sri Lanka at that time. So they asked me to make a special committee and chair it. We iska koi solution dekho, yari, hamara star icon, why is he resigning in 2003? So they got me involved to find out what, I measured everything. And I found out that he has an elbow deformed. Oh, the baat siddhi nahi hundi. From birth. So look at this Z. In certain areas, it's a Z. In certain areas of rotation, it becomes a straight line. But the angles of the Z do not change. Now they go, it's a straight line. But when there is a rotation, it becomes a Z. So we found out that he's got more rotation at his shoulder, which is legal. He's got more rotation at his wrist, which is legal. But his elbow doesn't move. So we published this, we showed this. We yo, aise karke bol karta, elbow nahi hilti. So according to the law, it should be written. Nobody believed us. Next. So, kya, yasika, manda koi nahi, apa jugaad kar liya. 
ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਜੁਗਾੜ ਕੀਤਾ ਚਲ ਵੀ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਸੋ ਵਾਟ ਵੀ ਡਿਡ ਵਾਸ ਹਾਂ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਚਲੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਚਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾ ਹਾਂ ਚਲ ਰਵੀ ਸ਼ਾਸਤਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਮੀ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲ ਰਹਾ ਚਲੋ ਰਵੀ ਸ਼ਾਸਤਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਮੀ ਪਲਾਨਡ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਕਾਲਡ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਬੜਾ ਪਪੂਲਰ ਥਾ ESPN ਕ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਸ਼ੋ ਸੋ ਜਸਟਿਨ ਲੈਂਗਰ ਸੈਡ ਆਈ ਆਲ ਬੈਟ ਐਂਡ ਔਰ ਵਾਸ ਇਟ ਮਾਈਕਲ ਸਲੇਟਰ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਡਿਜ਼ਾਈਨ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਫॉर ਹਿਮ so we showed the deformity and range of motion live on tv we said that he's got a 15 degree deformity which doesn't move he's got extra movement at the next piece over there so it's not something that he's made so i designed a place his father would tell you know plaster them but outstanding metal rods not. and something and we tied it to the elbow this is the brace next please and then only rolled with this with this brace in two local matches with the same force and one off and if the elbow is tied he's definitely not jerking it they were still not believing it so we got next slide please we got him to bowl to a single ball single single stump he hit the stump 30 balls out of 30 balls with this hit the stump hit the stump every time with the brace and it, this is you can see the whole expanded version of this espn cricket show it was run by uh, channel 4 in the uk also okay so saadi tareef hogi india <laughs> india and the, there was the next day uh, actually there was a test match to be played there indian newspaper started accusing me of helping them indian docks hand in murli's elbow <laughs> next so all this happened and and murli went on to play and he went on to take 800 test wickets and became the biggest vi- cricket wicket taker of all time and remember not only science or medicine can come to the aid of cricketers sometimes common sense works and you try your jugards and you will be rewarded thank you very much for your time thank you sir i would like to invite miss mamta soda padmashri and acb panchkula to present a memento to Dr. Dhillon. We have with us Colonel D.S. Shima, currently a professor of practice at Shulian University, Solon, is a postgraduate in management and engineering. He has been associated with management education for the past 38 years as faculty for MBA programs and has uh and has authored 18 books and has contributed 560 articles in National English Dailies and Tehelka magazine. Recognizing his intellectual contribution, he was awarded Punjab Ratan in 2008. So I request you to please say a few words and introduce the Playwright Awards. Thank you. thank you good evening ladies and gentlemen you see i am here since morning 10 o'clock and now at 5:30 i am still as enthusiastic as i was in the morning it goes to prove that we have had a wonderful day throughout and it was a spell binding day wonderful i am so happy that i am part of this uh, you see let me talk about chandigarh chandigarh uh, is a city of destiny you know in 1948 pandit nehru that great visionary he conceived the idea of chandigarh so that you know the punjabis who had lost their capital at lahore their faith and some kind of confidence and dignity is restored and that is how chandigarh came into being you see after that he what he wanted was he wanted punjabis to have a city as magnificent and as prestigious as there was none in india and that is how chandigarh came into being now we later on started calling it 
city beautiful. You know how this city is becoming more and more beautiful? City is still a work in progress. And people like Mr. Vivek Atre, uh, Chitranjan Agarwal, Mr. Hardeep, Chandpuri and many other friends sitting here, they have all contributed to making it what it is today. I have been here since last round 25 years and I have seen Chandigarh. Of course, I was here in 1960 when I was a student in PEC in 1960 where I spent four months and after that I went to IIT Kanpur. But the point is I have seen it growing, this city. And the way it has been growing in the past 10, 15 years since we have Chandigarh Literary Society, vibrant networking forum, novel bunch now, the idea of Saguna Jain and uh, Hardeep Chandpuri and all of them. Now, all that has added to the beauty of this city. And I think it is a wonderful idea to celebrate sports. Sports for making your mental and physical well-being is I think very, very important and I'm always very fond of saying that youth is the best hope for India. I have always believed and as a matter of fact, two of my books are targeted only at the youth. I talk about them only because I feel they are the trustees of, you know, our posterity and they are the ones who are a bright hope for India. And I feel very happy to be seeing such great youngster here doing wonders. We had this morning, we had two hockey legends, Surinder Sodi and Ashokji. Ashokji is a dear friend. And I am never tired of telling people that I have had the opportunity of meeting the great legendary Dhyan Chandji for 15 days at Bhopal in 1966. And let me share with you the anecdote, anecdote how. Uh, I was a captain posted at Bhopal and as you know, Dhyan Chandji had settled at Jhansi. There was a team called EME Jalandar, hockey team, one of the very good hockey teams considered in India. And that hockey team had to be trained at Bhopal. And my commandant asked me to go to Jhansi and request this great man that if he could come to Bhopal and train our team for 15 days, which he very kindly, very gracefully agreed. And my duty as a captain, you know how the captains are treated in army. My duty was to organize, arrange the hockey's balls, pads, and ensure that, uh, you know, chuna, uh, lagana, all around this. All that was my duty. And then, of course, ensure that a jeep is given to Dhyan Chandji and he comes there. And for 15 days, Dhyan Chandji was a very, very shy man. He won't speak much. He would just smile and say hello. And that was about all. I am very proud of this fact that Mr. Ashok Kumar Ji, Ashok Kumar Singh, and he was also Dhyan Chand Singh. Now, Ashok Kumar Ji is a very dear friend. Surinder Sodi Ji was here this morning. He had to go, and Ashok Ji has also left. Now, we have certain other great achievers here, sports achievers, and I think there is time to uh, give them awards, etc., has to be given to those sportsmen. Uh, Thank you, sir. I would like to extend a warm welcome to Ms. Mamta Soda, ACV Panchkula. She is an Indian sports person known for her successful 2010 attempt to scale the Mount Everest. She was honored by the Government of India in 2014 by bestowing on her the Padma Shri for her services to the field of mountaineering sport. After her successful Everest climb, the Government of Haryana absorbed her into the Haryana Police Force. Apart from being a mountaineer, she excelled in handball too. She was a member of the Haryana State Girls team which secured runner-up position in the 21st Junior Girls National Handball Championship 1998. As a member of Kurukshetra University team, she was a winner at the All India Inter-University Handball Tournament in December 1998. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. I request you to please come up on the stage and give away the Playwright Awards. I request Pian. The award goes to Mr. S. S. Sodi, former captain of the Indian hockey team, who first represented India internationally in the European Tour in 1975 and was the most scoring player. In the years that followed, he played on the most, most of the international tours, including the 78 Asian Games, where India won a silver medal. 
The 1980 Olympic Games in Moscow, where India secured a gold medal, and the 1982 Champions Trophy in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Unfortunately, sir had to leave, so I request Mr. Prabhjot Singh to accept the award on his behalf. Our second category is Young Male Achiever. The award goes to Mr. Gurjot Singh. He is an international level shotgun shooter in the event Olympic skeet. He represents India as part of the national team and currently ranked amongst the top three in the country. He has been representing India internationally since 2015. He won a bronze medal for Team India at ISSF World Cup 2021 in Cairo. And a gold at ISSF World Cup 2021 in Delhi. He has several national medals to his name, like the bronze at the 63, 63rd National Games, team gold for Punjab State, etc. I request you to please receive your award, sir. Our next category is Young Female Achiever and the award goes to Miss Anjali. Anjali is a hockey player. She has participated in the 11th and 12th Sub-Junior Nationals, Nehru Gold Cup 2022 in Delhi and also Kelo India Haryana in 2021. She secured third position in 2015-16 State Championship, second position in the 2019 State Championship and has won the 2017 and 18 State Championship. I request Mr. Vijay Lokpali to present the award to her. Our next category is Outstanding Coach and the award goes to Mr. Rajinder Singh. Mr. Rajinder Singh retired as a boxing coach and served in the sports department Haryana for 33 years. He has trained many international and national boxers. He is a formal national champion and has been awarded twice by the governor of Haryana for training the outstanding sports persons. He was also awarded by sports minister of Haryana, Mr. Sandeep Singh, for his outstanding and consistent coaching. His players have won several medals in World Championships and Asian Championships and over 80 plus national medals under his guidance. I request you, sir, to please receive your award. I request Mr. Hardeep Chandpuri to present the award to sir.
Our next category is Courageous Sports Person and the award goes to Ms. Reena Dham Shaktu. Uh, she was a panelist in the morning, so all those who joined in late, uh, she participated in successful Casper Sky Lab Commonwealth Women's Antarctic Expedition and became the first Indian woman to ski 900 kilometers from the coast of Antarctica to South Pole during November 2009 to Jan 2010. I request Mr. Vivek Atre to present the award to her. The last award is a special award and it goes to Mr. Harvinder Singh. He, he is a Paralympic archer who made his first appearance at the 2016 National Para Archery Championship in Rotak where he bagged a bronze medal. He made his first international appearance at the 2017 Para Archery World Championships and finished seventh. In 2018, he clinched India's first gold medal in recurve men's category in Para Archery at the 2018 Asian Para games held in Indonesia and grabbed a bronze medal at the 2019 Asian Para Archery Championship in Thailand. At the Paralympics, he impressed every Indian by clinching the country's first medal in archery at the Paralympics with a bronze medal. I request you, sir, to please receive your award. And I request Colonel D.S. Shima to present the award to him. Uh, I request all the winners to join us on stage for a group picture, please. Sweet. One more. I think we should invite the hockey girls to join us. Yes. Hockey girls. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. For a smile, get a piece, yes. Yes. One more. One more. Thank you so much. Thank Just hold on. Just hold on. Just wait, wait. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's the same like that. So, it's very good to see you. 
मतलब जितने भी हमारे अवार्डिस आए हैं तो वो बेसिकली ऑल ओवर हमारे जो नॉर्थ इंडिया से हैं और उनको स्पेशली हमारी कमेटी ने चुना भी है और उनको चुनकर लिया गया है और एक से एक बढ़कर है और मैं उन सभी के फ्यूचर के लिए कामना करती हूँ कि वो हमेशा कुछ न कुछ तरह से अचीवमेंट्स लेते रहें और इसके साथ ही प्ले राइट टीम जितनी है उन्होंने काफ़ी मेहनत की है इसमें उनको भी मैं थैंक यू कहती हूँ कि उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा किया है और आगे भी इस तरह से करते रहेंगे जिस तरह से आ, आ, सर की एक सोच रही है कि स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन को आगे बढ़ाना चाहिए और उनके बारे में बताना चाहिए क्योंकि स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन के लिए आ, एक पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग रखना ही बहुत बड़ी बात है अपने आप में और स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन अपनी पूरी जिंदगी लगा देता है आ, उस चीज़ को हासिल करने में एक बेटर स्पोर्ट्स मैन बनने में ही उसे बहुत टाइम लग जाता है और बाकी चीज़ों के लिए शायद उसके पास इतना टाइम नहीं रहता और वो अचीवमेंट्स जो है इतनी आसानी से नहीं मिलती बहुत कुछ खोना पड़ता है बहुत सारे कंप्रोमाइजेस करने पड़ते हैं उसका उसके बाद जाकर ही वो अचीवमेंट मिलती है और इसके साथ ही एक स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन अपनी कॉन्सट्रेशन जो है वो अचीवमेंट्स की तरफ किस लिए देता है उसके दो कारण है एक है कि वो अपने देश की उन्नति और तरक्की में भागीदारी बन सके दूसरा है वो समाज में एक आइकन बन सके ताकि लोगों को मोटिवेट कर सके उनको ये दिखा सके कि सभी में कोई ना कोई टैलेंट है लेकिन उसमें समझने की और उसको पहचानने की जरूरत है और हर व्यक्ति इस पूरे ब्रह्मांड में कोई भी कार्य है वो कर सकता है कुछ भी ऐसा नहीं है जो इम्पॉसिबल है हर चीज पॉसिबल है बट उसके लिए एक बेटर डेटिमिनेशन और इसके साथ ही बहुत सारी मेहनत और इसके साथ आपका जो फोकस है वो सिर्फ आपके एम की तरफ होना चाहिए तब जाके आप एक अचीवमेंट ले पाते हैं और इसके साथ ही आप बहुत सारे लोगों को जो है मोटिवेट करते हैं आज का जो यूथ है जो हम आज देख रहे हैं बहुत ऐसे यूथ आइकन्स हैं जो सभी को मोटिवेट करते हैं और उनसे मोटिवेट होकर वाकई में हमारे जो न्यू जनरेशन है वो कुछ हद तक जो है गलत डायरेक्शन में जाने से बच जाती है और मैं जब बेड रिडन पे थी सिक्स मंथ के लिए तो उस टाइम में कंटिन्यू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स मेरे माइंड में सिर्फ एवरेज ही चलता रहता था और जहां मुझे वन ईयर में जाके रिहेबिलिटेट करना था या फिर आ, मतलब डॉक्टर ही ठीक होना था मैं विद इन सिक्स मंथ डॉक्टर के पास जा, जाकर खड़ी होगी विदाउट एनी स्पोर्ट और डॉक्टर राज बहादुर ने ये कहा कि तुमने ऐसे किया कैसे मैंने कहा सर मुझे नहीं पता लेकिन जो आपने एक्सरसाइजेस बताई जो आपने मेडिसिन बताई जो आपने डाइट बताई उसको मैंने प्रॉपरली फॉलो किया और मेरे माइंड में ये था कि मुझे ठीक करना और मुझे एक्चुअल में मॉन्टरिंग करनी है और मुझे बेटर करनी है और आप यकीन नहीं मानेंगे मेरी एक्चुअल क्लाइमिंग जैसे आप कहते हैं कि मॉन्टरिंग करना या फिर पीक पर पहुंचना क्योंकि उससे पहले सिर्फ ट्रेनिंग और दूसरी चीजें चल रही थी मैंने उससे पहले कोई क्लाइमिंग नहीं की तो एक्चुअल क्लाइंबिंग मेरी उस इंजरी के बाद ही शुरू हुई मैंने फर्स्ट जो पीक क्लाइंब की थी वो मनाली में है फ्रेंडशिप पीक और उस पीक के क्लाइंब मुझे नहीं पता था कि मैं ये कर पाऊंगी या नहीं क्योंकि कंटिन्यू पेन होता था और अब भी होता है जब मैं क्लाइंबिंग करती हूँ क्योंकि वो इंजरी पूरी तरह से रिहेबिलिटेड नहीं हुई उसमें भी जैसे डॉक्टर साहब ने बताया कि हम लोग इग्नोर करते हैं वाकई मैंने उसे इग्नोर किया वो बिल्कुल स्टिप हो गया अभी तो जब क्लाइंबिंग करते हैं जब हम आइस क्लाइंबिंग करते हैं तो उस टाइम में वो जो राइट लेग है वो प्रॉपरली मेरी वर्क नहीं करती है लेकिन फिर भी मुझे लगता है कि नहीं हमें करना ही है तो हम लोग जो है जोर जबरदस्ती से जैसे भी हो सकता है उसको क्लाइंब करें क्योंकि मन में सिर्फ यही होता है कि आपको उस टारगेट तक पहुंचना है चाहे जितनी भी पेन हो चाहे कितनी भी प्रॉब्लम आए कितनी भी हर्डल्स आए लेकिन आपको उसको क्लाइंब करना है जब मैंने एवरेस्ट क्लाइंब किया तो उससे पहले जो है सभी कहते हैं कि ठीक है एवरेस्ट क्लाइंब कर लिया और ये लेकिन उसके पीछे कितनी बड़ी मेहनत होती है कितना बड़ा आ, उसके पीछे सेक्रीफाइस होते हैं ये अपने आप में बहुत बड़ी बात है बहुत कम लोग इस चीज़ को जान पाते हैं मैंने 12 साल कड़ी मेहनत की उसके बाद जाके 2010 में मुझे जो है माउंट एवरेस्ट क्लाइंब करने का मौका मिला और सबसे अच्छे मोमेंट्स मेरे थे जब मैंने अपने देश का तिरंगा विश्व की सबसे ऊंची चोटी पर लगाया और लोग मैं कभी नहीं बोल सकती अब भी मैं जब मैं आपके सामने बता रही हूँ तो मुझे वही मोमेंट्स अपने सामने नजर आ रहे हैं उससे बड़ी खुशी सच में कुछ नहीं हो सकती और मेरे दो ही मोटिव थे एवरेस्ट क्लाइंब करने के एक कि वीमेन के प्रति लोगों की सोच चेंज हमने उनका विरोध नहीं करना है किसी का विरोध नहीं करना है 
अपने आप को ऐसा बनाइए कि दूसरे लोगों की सोच अपने स्वयं में चेंज हो जाए और उसका बहुत बड़ा उदाहरण था कि जब मैं माउंटेनिंग करती थी क्योंकि हमारे मैं कैथल से बिलोंग करती हूँ तो उस टाइम में लोगों को इतनी अवेयरनेस नहीं थी और ना ही मेरे फैमिली में कोई जानता था कि माउंटेनिंग क्या चीज़ होती है उनको ये पता था कि ठीक है पहाड़ चढ़ती है लेकिन उनको ये नहीं पता था कि इसमें कितना बड़ा जोखिम हुआ क्योंकि ये डेथ जोन में जाने की बात आपका सेकेंड स्टेप में आपके साथ क्योंकि नॉर्मल स्पोर्ट्स में आपको इंजरी हो जाती है आप फिर भी बच जाते हैं लेकिन माउंटेनिंग के अंदर अगर आपने गलत स्टेप ले लिया तो आपकी डेथ डेफिनेटली हो सकती है या आपको ऐसी मेजर इंजरी हो जाएगी जिससे आप कभी उबर नहीं पाए तो ये एक तरह से डेथ जोन में जाने की बात है और बहुत कम लोग शायद माउंटेनिंग और एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स के बारे में जानते हैं एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स आपको वो जील और एक तरह से आप कहेंगे कि एक कॉन्फिडेंस देता है जो कि आपकी आम लाइफ में आप किसी भी फील्ड में जाएंगे तो आप हमेशा कभी ना तो घबराएंगे ना कभी आप डिप्रेशन में जाएंगे और मैं तो ये कहती हूँ कि आफ्टर टेंथ हर बच्चे को वन ईयर के लिए एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स की ट्रेनिंग देनी चाहिए क्योंकि मेरा पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस है कि उससे आपके बच्चों में एक नई जान आ जाती है और ये हमारी सोच और ये छोटे छोटे टारगेट्स आपको रखने चाहिए ये बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि लाइफ को डल नहीं करना है लाइफ को कुछ ना कुछ नया देते रहिए उसको इतना एंजॉय कीजिए कि लाइफ में सच में बहुत कुछ है जब आप कुछ गेन कर लेते हैं तो दूसरों को दीजिए दूसरों को मोटिवेट कीजिए उसमें आपको अलग ही आनंद आएगा मैंने मैक्सिमम जो हरियाणा में जितने भी माउंटेनियर हुए हैं या फिर एवरेस्ट क्लाइंब किए हैं वो सब मेरे स्टूडेंट्स रहे हैं या फिर मेरे गाइडेंस ली है तो जितने भी लोग हैं वो आपको इस नजरिए से देखते हैं कि कहीं ना कहीं वो हमें हेल्प करते हैं जब आप कुछ अचीव कर लेते हैं या फिर कुछ ऐसे पद पे पहुंच जाते हैं जो कि वाकई में बहुत मुश्किल होता है लेकिन एक अच्छा इंसान बने रहना बहुत जरूरी है चाहे आप कहीं भी पहुंच जाए अगर आप अच्छे इंसान नहीं हैं तो ना उस अचीवमेंट का कोई फायदा है और ना ही उस पद का तो हमेशा अच्छे इंसान बनिए फिर देखिए लाइफ बहुत अच्छी हो जाएगी और लोगों के लिए बहुत जरूरी है अपने लिए सब कोई करता है लेकिन दूसरों के लिए करना अपने आप में बहुत बड़ी बात है थैंक यू मैम आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर हरदीप चाकुरी को फाउंडर ऑफ प्ले राइट टू डिलीवर दर्ड ऑफ थैंक्स गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सो दिस कम इज दोस्ट डिफिकल्ट पार्ट वन वी हैव टू से गुड बाय टू एवरीबडी एज ऑर्गेनाइजर्स हम एक इवेंट प्लान कर सकते हैं उसके बारे में सोच सकते हैं कि किसको कौन सा सेशन किसको बुलाना है कैसे क्या करना है मगर तभी एक फेस्टिवल कोई भी एक इवेंट तभी सक्सेसफुल होता है अगर स्पॉन्सर्स हमारे साथ हैं और आप सब हमारे साथ हैं सो ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ प्ले राइट आई एम सो ग्रेटफुल टू ऑल ऑफ यू हु कुड कम आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू ऑल द स्पीकर इट वॉज अ बिग लर्निंग एक्सरसाइज स्पेशली फॉर मी and i'm so grateful to you all thank you all thank you very much and let's make play right 2024 an even bigger one thank you very much